Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. I'm going to review an old television show today. It's called Decoy, 1957. It was, uh, it was a syndicated show that starred Beverly Garland as Casey Jones, a New York City police woman. And this was really kind of the first show of this type uh, that had a female lead. Um, managed 39 episodes. So it did fairly well in syndication, but only technically one season. Um, it was sort of she, Beverly Garland, in a in an uh, interview in Film Facts magazine, said that ultimately she kind of regretted doing the show um, because at the time you were getting the really rough competition between between movies and television. Television was the new technology. Granted, it had been around, you know, for a lot longer than, you know, uh, 1957, but it was really coming into its own in the 50s. Um, and so it was disrupting the film industry. A lot of folks staying home and watching TV rather than going to the movies. Ultimately, the uh, motion pictures had to sort of up their game. And this we see the same thing going on. You know, where uh, your traditional television is supplanted or challenged by um, by the VCR, later DVDs. Obviously, that impacted uh, motion pictures as well to some degree. Uh, cable, satellite, now it's streaming. There's always a new technology. And so this was a problem for a while. And because she had done this television show, she was a little bit sort of blacklisted by the by the movies. Now, she had primarily had starred in more B-pictures up until then, um, but she's always been a favorite actress of mine. Uh, she had this, I don't know, a very casual, genuine feel to her, a lot of authenticity, whatever she was, whatever she was in, whatever she was doing. So I've always, I've always been a big fan of Beverly Garland. Uh, you might remember her from um, Mystery Science Theater, did a film she was in called uh, Swamp Diamonds. Uh, which also had, uh, um, oh shoot, uh, Star of Mannix, uh, Mike Connors. Mike Connors from Mannix was also in that. Um, and maybe you've seen her in uh, the later episodes of um, My Three Sons, where she marries Steve Douglas, uh, you know, and you know, finally The Bachelor, well, widower, I should say, is married. And um, she was also in Scarecrow and Mrs. King, which is a great, great little sort of spy comedy from the 80s that, that I remember watching. At any rate, um, the show is set in New York City, and it's about the New York City Bureau of Police Women. And the early episodes have a, a sort of um, a somewhat grittier, more real feeling to them. It's... Um, you know, this is not a sort of um, a Rockford Files, Magna P.I. kind of detective show. It's a little bit more like Dragnet, although not quite as dry. Um, obviously, with Dragnet, Jack Webb was trying to really nail down the procedural aspect of police work. And he didn't want a ton of emotion, especially from the police officers, you see that somewhat more with the uh, with witnesses or suspects, um, especially in the earlier dragnets and in the radio. Uh, it's it's a little bit more um, a little bit more dramatic than that, but it's it stays fairly grounded um, and has some really powerful acting performances. And the earliest episodes have some you know kind of tough storylines as well. Now, as the show went on. You get some more traditional police detective type shows that are maybe a little more focused on the capers than on the people who are involved, victims and um, and criminals. Um, and some of those are still solid, but I think the best work is when it's a little bit more uh, character driven. We don't ultimately learn a lot about the Casey Jones character through the course of the show. Um, she's a policewoman. You, you, you kind of pick up that she was at one point engaged to a police officer. It seems like he died on duty. Um, but it's, so it's not really about her, but, um, but she's, of course, integral to it because 
the show is called Decoy because she's often and generally going undercover in these episodes. And so she's got to go undercover and and form some sort of a relationship with a suspect um, or maybe even with a victim to try to garner information that the police can use to solve the crime. And so it, beca- it does become more character driven in that regard. Um, and this was a New York based show. New York actors, especially at that time, were a little different than the LA based actors. They were they tended to be a little bit more serious. Um, you know, they were a little bit more involved in theater, maybe than the LA you know folks. And so I think that comes through in this as well. And it's a show that has a lot of great guest stars, especially for folks who love classic television. You'll see a lot of folks who are going to come up uh, in shows, uh, either in supporting roles or leading roles in the 60s and the 70s and into the 80s. So um, you get a lot of that in in 50 shows. Uh, Actors who are going to become much better known later that they're sort of starting out and doing some of these smaller television programs. So I thought what I'd like to do is maybe um, maybe talk about some of the episodes of the show that I particularly liked and some of the ones that maybe had some guest stars that people were going to find, um, you know, somewhat interesting. And actually, we'll start that off with the first episode. It's called Stranglehold. It's a it's a good opening episode. It get, kind of gives you what you need to know. Um, and it has a really, really good performance uh, from Joanne Linville. Um, she did a lot of TV back in the day. Uh, maybe at this point is best known as the Romulan commander in the uh, Star Trek episode, The Enterprise Incident, um, you get a lot of really emotional monologues and breakdowns in this series, especially in the in the very character-driven episodes. And she does a great one. It's um, Casey has to book into this flop house um, to pose as a friend to a woman whose boyfriend is uh, suspected in a robbery and murder. And um, again, Joanne Linville plays that that character, Molly Orchid, and it's it's really it's really excellent. And it was a good it was a good episode to hook me into the series and and keep me going. Um, in the second episode, it's called the Red Clown. This is another pretty powerful one, and it it really makes good use of having a female lead. Uh, Casey tracks down this artist um, who has abandoned his daughter, and um, the daughter is really kind of desperate to find her father. Um, And so it really gets into those family dynamics and these kind of problems. The late 50s had a lot of social consciousness sort of um, movies and and TV and plays and books. A lot of people think of the 50s as being, you know, Eisenhower on the golf course and poodle skirts and, you know, rock and roll. And it was all very flippant and, Nobody really cared about anything. It's all materialistic and keeping up with the Joneses. Well, that's true of almost any decade. But actually, the 50s also had a big current of people trying to solve societal problems. Now, they didn't always end up with the right solutions, but they were certainly trying to solve them. And so you get episodes like this that kind of get into the problems of, you know, broken up families and what that does to the children and things of that nature. Uh, Barbara Berry um, plays the uh, little girl's mom in this one. And um, I just did a review a few weeks ago of a TV series from the 80s called um, Tucker's Witch, in which she plays the mother of the uh, of the lead character, the witch, in that one. Of course, she was also uh, well-known um, uh, playing Barney Miller's wife on Barney Miller, um, and did a nice job on that one, too. Oh, yeah, she also was seducing, uh, I think it was her, was seducing Murray Slaughter on an episode of Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, how about that? Um, the the phoner is, boy, it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of its time. Now, for one thing, you got, um, you got a guest shot from... Um, uh, from Frank Sutton, who is best known as Sergeant Carter on uh, Gomer Pyle. You know, Sergeant Carter, Sergeant Carter. 
uh, you know, pile anyways, but here he's playing an A1 creep who is making these harassing phone calls and Casey has to sort of track him down. Uh, and he's a real creep and he plays it great in this, in this one. And that's, that's something that, you know, people don't really use the phone anymore like they used to. It's a lot of texting. And obviously, I guess the equivalent now would be trolling on the internet, but you used to get those calls. I mean, back in the day when you were really trained, the phone rings, you got to answer it. You'll see that in old movies and TV all the time, where a couple's about to kiss and the phone rings. <gasps> we got to answer the phone. <laughs> you know, it's not like you could just go, ah, forget it, who cares? Got to answer the phone. It could be important. No answering machines. Got to answer the phone. You'd answer the phone and you'd get somebody pulling a prank or you'd get somebody breathing heavily or saying something disgusting on the other end. You'll see this crop up in a lot of shows and it was a genuine problem for a long time. Over time becomes less of a problem. But um, so, yeah, I mean, part of the fun of watching these old shows is you, you kind of tap into some of these things, especially if you're old enough where you're going to go and, oh, yeah, I remember when that was a. That was a thing that was going on. And, and maybe if you're younger, you kind of go, oh, I had no idea that that kind of thing happened. Um, so the phoner, that's a good one. Um, episode seven is called Deadly Corridor, uh, where Casey has to pose as a prisoner in a women's prison. And you had to do a women's prison episode at some point to catch a murderer. It's pretty standard uh, kind of show, uh, kind of plot for these shows. But it has some good performances. Lois Nettleton and Colleen Dewhurst are both notable in the cast. And I think most people would know them probably from television in the later decades when they're a little bit older. Um, but, you, you know, you see them in this one. And again, a lot of good meaty dramatic stuff and, uh, you know, and get to play like really, really kind of just, um, I don't know, wicked, um, you know, cold sort of characters. I, I'm sure a lot of these folks, you know, Especially if you were in the theater doing TV sometimes, it was like, oh, kind of, you know, going down to the world doing TV. But, hey, help pay the bills. And I think some of these folks probably probably relished it because you got to really sink your teeth into something and go for it. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, you you get a lot of a lot of these episodes with um, with a lot of these famous faces. Diane Ladd stars in uh, episode 11. Uh, which is called Two Days to Kill. Um, you know, a, a lot a lot of great stuff, really, especially, like I said, if you like, you know, classic TV. Um, you didn't get a lot of really glamorous actors and actresses on the show. Like I say, it really went for a more a more grounded and sometimes even kind of a bleak look at New York City and, and police work and criminality. Um, it kind of reminds me of shows that per, were produced by uh, Nat Hyken, um, who did like Car 54 and The Phil Silver Show, who was always looking for, frankly, odd looking people. You know, like that's what he that's what he really wanted. He, he wanted folks who didn't have the, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, maybe the standard, typical beauty of, of actors and actresses back in the old days. He wanted folks who not just looked average, but looked a little, <laughs> looked a little odd. Um, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying this to be insulting to anybody on this show. Obviously, Beverly Garland, I think, is very attractive, you know, but it wasn't like the traditional sort of attractiveness that you got on this show. And it really was trying to get down to just you know, people that are, are, are um, in that weird place in society, you know, that, that, that aren't the beautiful people that are, that are struggling for one reason or another. Um, episode 13, My Brother's Killer. Really good episode. Puts Casey in a lot of danger. She is held hostage by this really psychotic killer. Uh, in his car, who's trying to escape. Frank and Joseph Campanella, both guest star in this one as police officers. But it was a really good one. And and the, because of the way the show was filmed, you go, oh, you know, I okay, yeah, the lead character should be surviving. But you felt a little sense of danger and, and 
the, the parts in it were all played really, really well. Uh, episode 19, The Challenger. This is like the obligatory um, crooked boxing episode that you see in everything, including uh, in episodes Police Squad had to do the boxer episode. It was, it was standard at the time. Um, but we get that in this one. And um, again, it's a decent episode. It's not a great episode. I just bring it up because you had to have the boxing episode in one of these kind of shows. Um Across the World, episode 20, uh, one of the better later episodes, Nick Colasanto, who you'll probably know, and you can kind of see him there. He's the guy facing away. Probably know him best as Coach on Cheers, where, of course, he plays this kind of goofy, happy character. A lot of the TV that he did, he played a down and dirty crook, I mean, and usually a violent one, and he does that in this one. And again, this is another episode where Casey is in a lot of danger, she's um, she's sort of investigating like a smuggling thing, if I remember correctly. And, um, you know, Coach is going to straight up kill her. I mean, it's like, it's like he's not real shy about it. He is a really, really bad dude. And again, funny, because if you're used to Coach, you're just like going, or Colasanto as Coach. It's just funny to see him like that. Um, Saturday Lost, episode 24, involves... The Evils of Marijuana. And um, it involves a, a accident that was fatal and a woman's memory loss. Um, and it's, it's good. You got Simon Oakland in it. And um, is this the one? I'm looking at my notes here because I don't think I wrote it. Yeah, yeah, I did write it down. Larry Hagman, a young Larry Hagman, you know, from JR from Dallas and... Uh, Major Nelson from from My Dream of Genie is in this one, and he was uh, he was come, came from a theatrical family, so uh, you know this is an early early episode of TV that he's in. Um, High Swing is a really crazy, interesting episode. has a really powerful ending. I will not spoil it. It is worth watching. It's uh, yeah, it's a it's a good one. It was it kind of took me by surprise, uh, and this was toward, you know getting towards the end of the series. Ladies Man, episode 28, is another one that involves a psychotic who kills women. And in fact, he uses women to kill women. Um, Lois Nettleton is also in this one. Uh, Michael Tolan plays a psycho, and he's really good and comes to a really uh, a really bad end, for him at least. Um, but that, yeah, that was, a, that was another good later episode. Cry Revenge, episode 29, kind of harkened back to the grittier tone of the earlier episodes and the more em emotional aspect of the crimes. Uh, lonely people in despair. Um, a, again, a good one. There's a lot of these episodes. They're well written and they offer actors a really good opportunity to emote and get into that kind of stuff. And I grant you, it is... Um, it's a style of acting that you don't get as much today. It's one of the things, if you're watching older pop culture, there are different styles of acting. Um, and a style you're unfamiliar with sometimes will seem a little bit maybe goofy or corny or like overacting. If you watch enough of it, though, you get into it and you find the truth of that kind of acting. Um, and it it really works. It really delivers for you. And you do get a lot of that in uh, in episodes of Decoy. So, like I said, all in all, 39 episodes. There weren't any episodes that I hated, but I think I called out some of the ones that I liked the best. And all the other ones were, at a minimum, they were at least enjoyable to watch. You know, the crimes weren't necessarily uh, massively difficult to sort of figure out. But um, it's not, again, it's not that kind of show. It's not so much a whodunit. It's more like showing how the police deal with these problems, how they gather the information, etc. And believe me, a lot of those episodes that I wasn't deeply in love with also have some big future names. Peter Falk shows up in one, um, you know, playing a character he played a lot before. Before he became Columbo, he had a certain type of character he played, and he, he, he plays it in this one. It was a horse racing episode. He, if you got to have a boxing episode, you got to have a crooked horse racing episode as well in any kind of police detective thing from this period. So that's Decoy. 50s TV, 
kind of a big first to have a woman in that kind of a lead role. And Beverly Garland plays it beautifully. I'm a real big fan of her. She just has such a genuine, authentic way uh, of playing her characters. It makes them feel real. She is not overly dramatic in how she does things. And again, that works well here because the victims of the crimes, the committers of the crimes, often are, and it, it sort of plays off of her. She's kind of our eyes into this, this other world. And oftentimes ends the episode breaking the fourth wall, talking to the audience about you know what has happened. All in all, I enjoy this series uh, quite a bit. Um, go check it out. It is still, I believe, on Tubi. I think you can probably find episodes on YouTube. I'm sure they're elsewhere, too. Again, it it lasted one season. It didn't do extraordinarily well, so it's you know not one of those uh, TV series that's hard to find. Um, but worth watching, especially if you're trying to learn a little bit more about the 1950s, you know, beyond the nonsense that you got from sort of, I don't know, crappy boomers in the 60s who were, you know, oh, the 50s was lame, man. Uh, that's because they were 10 years old at the time. The 50s is a lot deeper and more interesting than people realize, uh, both in good and bad ways. So it's a great, it's great for that. You get some decent, you know, police procedural stuff. Uh, you get a lot of future TV stars. You get some real people getting their chops into their roles and really, you know, taking the drama up a notch. Um, and uh, it's, I think, worth it for all those reasons. If, you're, if you are an actor or you really enjoy acting, I think it's a great show for that. You get to see a lot of examples of, of folks. And maybe you look at it and go, oh, geez, they're kind of hamming it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, now they're really trying to get into the truth of the role and get into the meat of the role and try to get that emotion across of, of what these people in these tremendous circumstances are going through. I think it's great from that standpoint. So, if you've ever seen Decoy, uh, I'd love to hear what you think of it in the comments below. Um, or if you have any qu other questions about the series, I'd be happy to answer them. Just leave a, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like. Maybe think of subscribing. Maybe share it with a friend. And in the meantime, uh, God bless everybody. Uh, be kind to one another. Try to have some fun out there and go take a look at Decoy from 1958 starring Beverly Garland, a great little police show from the olden days. And I'll see you next time in Dad's Den of Pop Culture.